press the button. How cool is that? Controlling your blind from your wall switch. Now, while it's in mid-flow, if I press it again, excellent functionality and all working via smart scenes. Hi guys, today we're unboxing and setting up a blind engine. So this particular one is from a company called Zemi Smart. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So let's take a brief look around the packaging. So it comes in a very plain package, just a picture of the blind engine on there, coming around the back, nothing else on this, so all plain. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so you must know the routine by now. I've laid out everything you get in the packaging, so let me quickly run through the items one by one. You get an installation and instruction manual, all in English and two sides to it. You get a card to assist with installation and it's got two holes on it and that marries up with the holes on the back here so you know where to mark on the wall. You get some fixtures, so two raw plugs and two screws. You get three plastic cogs and these are for different bead chains. You get a bit of plastic here with a nib at the end and that's used to reset the device. You get a charge cable, length of this cable is 1.1 meters, good cable quality on there and big chunky connectors on each side. One is USB and the other is DC. You get a USB receiver for this and the way this works is it uses radio frequency to connect to the blind engine and control it. And the advantage of that is, is the fact that the blind engine doesn't have to be connected to Wi-Fi, only the receiver and that communicates with the blind engine, which is a really clever way of doing it. Some Blind motors require it to be plugged in permanently. This one doesn't, and it works with Tuya and Smart Life. Now, looking at the receiver itself, all plasticky build, feels of good quality. You've got a USB connection point on there. You can see there it says 5 volts DC, 5 watts. And then coming over here, you've got a set button there. You get a remote control, and if I take it off the back plate, the back plate can be either screwed onto a wall or stuck on via the sticker over here. And looking at the size of this, this is 12.8 centimeters by 5 centimeters and 0 0.09 centimeters deep. Quite chunky, it would have been nice if it was a little bit more slimmer. The cool thing about this is obviously you attach this on a wall, magnet clips it on. Looking on the controller, you've got three buttons up, down and stop. Let's take a look at the blind engine. So in terms of dimensions, it comes in at 18 centimeters by 4.1 and 3.8 centimeters deep. Quite a large size to it. Build is good, strong plastic all the way around, matte white finish on there. If I come around the side, you can see there's no buttons or anything like that. You've got two slots here, and this is where the B chain goes in. If you were going to install it sideways, for instance, you can just break the flaps here and then get the chain going through there. Coming over here, nothing there. Looking at the bottom, you've got a set button, and then you've got 7.4 volts DC. So that's a DC connection point to charge it. And there's a notch here. If I pull that down, pull there, the slider comes out you can see some steps there. That's just if you wanted to put more tension once you've installed it. Now to put it back on, it just slips back in. Three buttons on here, up, stop, and down. And then if you look here, you've got something that says open, slide it up, and you've got the place where you put the cogs. So this is a temporary one in here, and if I pull that off, that's actually used when you're installing the device. So the way it works, you take the template here, put that in there, hold it against the wall, and obviously put your bead chain going around it. But once it's nice and tense, then you can mark where you need to drill and then move it away, drill your holes. Then you can work out which cog you need to use. Obviously put it around there, just see if you turn it, if it moves well, if there's no issues, and then fit it on and then install this on. Coming over close, you can see here, there's a slight notch there. So you just marry up the notch on there and just slot it into position. Push it in and there you go. Once you've got that on, obviously put the cover back and that should be it. Let's make a start at setting up this device. So I'm at my Android phone. If I go to the Play Store and we search for the app Smart Life. So it's either Smart Life or Two Year Smart. We're gonna go for Smart Life here. I've already got it installed. If you haven't, obviously install it, register an account and sign in. So if I now click open to start it up, these are all the smart devices I currently have and I've even organized it by room as well. Now to get started with this, let's click plus, small home appliance and it's curtain. Next we need to enter in our Wi-Fi password. Mine's already cached as I've already used the app and we need to plug in the USB receiver. So if I now plug that in here. Now coming in close on there, you can see a blue light is flashing away. So now if I click next, Confirm the indicator's rapidly blinking. Let's give it a moment. 
And there you go, the device is added in and it's added in as RD Intelligent Blind Motor. Click done to that and there you go, that's the interface for it. So now if I go back for a second, you can see it, that's how it's going to appear in the app. And if you go in there, let me quickly go through the options. If I click here on edit, you've got the device information, tap to run automation. So if you've got it linked to any automation, you'll see it there. You've got all the third party controls it can work with. Offline notification if it can't connect to it anymore and share the device, you can share it with other people, you can create a group with different devices, so you can group them all together so you can have multiple blinds opening or closing. FAQ and feedback, check device network, check for firmware update and remove device, that's all you have there. And coming up the top, just to mention, you can rename it as well. Coming back from there, you've got a slider here. Now, first thing we need to do is turn on the blind motor. So looking over here, you've got the buttons, when you click it, nothing happens. Now, to get this on, by default, when it comes from the factory, it's in an off mode. So you just got to put the plastic pin into the set point and just hold on to it for about 10 seconds. And there you go. It's just flashed blue. And if I now press the button, you can hear the motor. And if you hear it, it sounds very quiet. You can see it moving very slowly. If I press it again, it speeds up. So this is quite good. It's got two modes of operation. You can run it slowly or run it quickly. If I press it once, slow, press it again, speeds up, then you've got a stop button on there. You can see already it's working in conjunction with the app. So now if I pull that up, well let's pull it down because obviously the top and the bottom hasn't been set. And that's that. Let's pause it for a moment. And if I now click more, you can change the motor direction. So up and down can be reversed. And then looking in schedule, so you can set a timer on this to close or open. Now looking in there, you've got a repeat option. So if you wanted this to happen every day, you can put a note against it, get a notification if it was done. And then the control option, all you've got is open and close. You've not got an option to say 50% or 60% on this. Now coming back from there, coming back again, back again, we're back to here. And that's it, as simple as that to get this up and running. So I'm gonna install this blind motor in the studio and we've got a big blind over here. Let's make a start installing the blind engine. So we need to remove the existing screw holding the chain. Next, we can test out the different cogs we have with this. You just need to find a good fitting one. Just go one by one and just see how well it fits in. Now this one seems fine and I've tensed the actual string on here. You find now, doesn't seem to be slipping. So it looks like this is a good one to go with. So using the template now, you can see cogs here, the temporary one, and I can just mark the locations where to drill. Now we can just screw on the plate here now. Next we can take the blind engine and position it. So put the cord on there now and slot this down. There you go, that's firmly in position now. There you go. Press stop and that's it. So it seems to be working well. Now the blind motor's installed. A couple of things to note. To change the direction the motor runs in, the buttons you press here, you actually press the set button once and then down arrow and that will reverse the way it goes. So at the moment, it's going in the correct direction. Press the other way, goes down. If I press the set, Red light flashes, press down arrow, and it reverses it. So that'll go down, and that'll go up. If I do that again, reverses it again, so now it's in the correct direction. Setting limits, that's an interesting one. So what you do, press the set button, press up arrow, then it flashes once, and then you press up arrow again to set the top limit. And then to do the bottom one, you press the button for set, 
press up arrow and then it flashes red and then you press the down arrow and then it flashes again and then that sets the down limit. Now to show the blind in action with the app, so if I now click down, there you go, starts coming down, let's give it a moment. Excellent, reached the lower limit and it's stopped. And if I now drag this up slightly, 95%, so you can make adjustments via this as well. And now if we completely open the blind, there you go, works really well. Next, just to show the blind in action with voice commands using the Google product and the Amazon product. So coming to my phone, if I go to Google Home, Go to the plus, click plus, set up device, works with Google. You just need to link into the Smart Life service. Once you've selected that, it'll ask for the credentials, enter them in and then save it. Now coming back and now looking here, that's how it's represented. So I've renamed it to Studio Blind and if I click on that, there's no options available within that. So now if I say open Studio Blind. Sure, opening Studio Blind. Pause Studio Blind. Got it. Pausing Studio Blind. Open Studio Blind 50%. Sure. Opening Studio Blind to 100%. Open Studio Blind to 50%. Okay. Opening Studio Blind to 50%. Open Studio Blind. Got it. Opening Studio Blind. Close Studio Blind. Okay. Closing Studio Blind. There you go. How cool is that? Works really well. So you can open it, you can close it, you can pause it, you can say what position you want it to open in. And you saw for yourself, obviously it picked up one of the positionings wrong if what I said 100%. But then when I said it again, it did pick it up. Obviously, it's how the Google Home interprets what you're saying. Next, let me show this in action with the Amazon device. So if I click here to the Amazon app, click in the corner, go to skills and games, and we search for Smart Life. That's the skill we're after. Enable it, enter in your credentials, and away you go. So next, let's click on devices, come across, go to all devices, scroll down, Studio Blind. There it is. If I click on that, Again, there's no options available at all, just like with the Google device. So now, if I say, open the Studio Blind. Studio Blind doesn't support that. Turn on Studio Blind. Okay. Pause Studio Blind. Okay. Open Studio Blind 70%. Okay. Turn off Studio Blind. Okay. There you go. You see for yourself, it does work, but only on and off is working on this. You can't say open it or close it. Now to overcome this issue with saying on and off, what you do, if you go over here, click on routines, and you can see I've created two routines there. So if I click on one of them, and you could set a routine to say, if you say close Studio Blind, it will do power off on the blind and coming back and over here, if you say open Studio Blind, it will turn on power for the blind. So now, if I say open Studio Blind. Okay. There you go, excellent. Close Studio Blind. Okay. There you go, problem overcome, and it worked really well. Next, let's test out the blinds working remotely. So I'll turn off my Wi-Fi, give it a moment to connect to 4G. Now go into there, 
click open and there you go remotely you can open and close your blinds works well as you can see okay so next just to show smart scenes so if I go to smart and in automation if I click plus when device status changes got a light switch in here which I've just set up if I go to switch to if it's switched on and then we can say run a device studio blind and there you go they're the controls you have available so you can open it stop it close it and looking down here you can set a position so you can have it opening halfway if you press something or you can change motor direction so now what I've done if I come back I've created two automation pieces here and if I go into one of them it says if the switch is turned off close the blind and on this one if the switch is turned on open the blind so now to show this in action if I move the camera over here so I've got a no neutral light switch here two buttons on there this works with a Zigbee bridge so now if I press the button how cool is that controlling your blind from your wall switch now while it's in mid flow if I press it again excellent functionality and all working via smart scenes now in case you're wondering does it work manually not really because the motors fixed and it's not letting you really turn so if you wanted to do it manually what you'd have to do is really just loosen the bottom bit and release it so you can pull it with your hand excellent functionality from this blind I'm really blown away by it I've reviewed a number of blind engines over the last few years and I think this has to be the best one so far reason being you don't need to plug it in I think that's the key thing for me I don't want to plug anything in I'm happy to have something charged up and I like the fact this is working via radio frequency with the dongle plugged into a USB point so I think that's a great idea the way they've got this working if I was nitpicking only thing I can really say about this is the fact that it doesn't have a battery indicator and it would have been nice even if it had a solar panel to keep it topped up in terms of charging but other than that a great product so there you go I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this details are in the description below hang around for the end cards I'll have some more great smart tech drop me a comment let me know what you think of this if you haven't liked it drop me a comment let me know why you didn't like it thanks for viewing and see you in the next one